I get asked a lot about uh, montaging techniques and probably one of the most useful tools you can use in Photoshop is masking and I'm going to show you a little bit about using layer masks here and the different techniques for using it that might make your workflow a little bit easier here I have three images I have a foreground guy is isolated on white in his shot I have a background and then I have a background behind that background which I'm eventually going to want to show through and uh, I'm just going to show you how to employ layer masks so that you can use non-destructive masking techniques uh, for isolation and for manipulating your image. First of all, you should understand something about erasing, is that if I were to take this layer right now and use my eraser tool, which is E on the shortcut, and start getting rid of some of this layer, I would be destroying that layer entirely. Now I can go back in my history palette and move up on the eraser tool, and I can restore that but if you erase something and you've already done enough actions that's filled up your history tool you won't be able to go back and do that e even if you could you would have to go back and redo everything you've done since that erase in order for the undo to work so it would be easier and it would be more efficient if you could do something that could be later undone so what I'm gonna do right now is I wanna isolate this guy from the white I'm gonna get my magic wand tool I'm gonna select the white I'm using a tolerance of about 20 right now. Now, uh, because my white is selected, and I actually want the guy selected, I'm going to go to Select, and then Inverse, Control-Shift-I, you could do that too. And now that I have just the guy selected, and I have out here selected, but there's nothing in it. As a matter of fact, I may get rid of that. Just use my uh, Marquee tool, hold down on Alt, which you'll see a little minus sign and get rid of this selection so that it does not appear and just drag over that now I just have the guy and I can instantly isolate him with the layer mask now that he's selected by hitting the add layer mask button down at the bottom of your layers palette now I have just masked him out using a layer mask I did not erase any of that and you can see right here that if I deactivate that layer mask you can still see the background. I'm probably not going to want the white back, but this is just an illustration. It did miss some stuff here at the top, and you can paint directly on a layer mask, which I'm going to do right now, by getting your brush tool. And layer masks work using a monochromatic palette. If you've got your layer mask selected, you will not be able to activate a color. So if you were to choose red and hit OK, you'll see the shade of red and gray that you have. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to totally get rid of some of the white around his hair. I'm going to choose black. Black by default on a layer mask is to make invisible. White is to show. And using a soft edge brush, I'm just going to paint around the tops of his hair where I can still see the white and get rid of that. Now in the event that I make a mistake, rather than just going to the undo, I can actually paint it back in. So if I find later that for some reason my selection selected a part here of his uh, his suit and I want to get it back I can just simply switch my foreground color to white paint over it and it reappears so all my data and my info for this image still contained here underneath the layer mask it's just mask out as the word would imply now I'm going to hit control T shrink him down and just set him off to the side here now I want the city behind, I want it to show through this hallway. And so I'm going to add another layer mask. And I'm going to add it in advance and show you how to use a layer mask if you already have one. So I'm just going to add a layer mask. Nothing will happen here because nothing was selected. And then because I want to get rid of some of the background, I'm going to get my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to select right about here. And I'm just going to get rid of this part of the building. I'm just going to uh, get it out of my view. But in case I want it back again, I don't want to be destructive, so I'm going to mask it out. What I can do here if I have black as my background color is just hit control backspace and it masks it out for me. Uh, the other thing you can do is go to edit fill and fill with black and whatever you fill with black will then be blacked out. So now I can see the city behind it. I can move that city around one thing you will notice about layer masks is that by default, usually, if it's a rasterized layer, that layer mask is connected and it's linked by the little chain symbol. What this means is if I take this image of the man and I move either his mask or him, like so, they will move together. 
Now, in some cases, you may not want that to be the case. You may want the mask to remain stationary, and you may want just the image to move. In that case, you can deactivate that connection just by clicking on it. By clicking on it again, I can reactivate it. And if I deactivate it and move him, then the mask will not move. Only the man will move, and the mask will remain in place. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to reconnect them. Something you should be aware of, if you use smart objects, you can right click here and we'll convert to smart object. It will automatically apply that layer mask and you will lose all the data that was masked out. You will not be able to access it. Also, if you add a layer mask to a smart object, it will not connect to it. You will have to move it separately or rasterize it before you move. Your layer mask won't follow it around. So I'm going to get rid of that and undo my smart object so I still have my layer there. Now you can paint on these masks with any color you'd like so suppose I want to just make a partial transparency I can actually do that quite simply by getting a different hue of gray so I'm just going to make a partially invisible skylight here and this will be crude but it'll give you an idea of what you can do and I'm gonna select this with my uh, lasso tool. Now I don't want to fill it with black because I don't want it to be entirely invisible so I'm going to fill it with something uh, that's a little neutral. I'm just going to grab a gray in between there and I'm going to hit alt backspace or I'm going to fill with foreground color and you'll notice that now I have filled it with a partially transparent shade uh, in that layer mask so that now we can see a little bit but not all of it and we can see the edge of our uh, of our other layer and that's not necessarily ideal in this case but that just gives you some ideas of of what you can do if you wanted to make a partial transparency where you can still see the color uh, one other thing you should be aware of is that layer masks can uh, also be used on adjustment layers and they're very useful for that I'm going to get rid of what I just did with filling that lasso tool and I'm going to show you how I might use it on an adjustment layer. Suppose I wanted to give him some highlights on his right side and what I could do is just grab down here an adjustment layer. I'm going to go to curves for this one and I'm going to do a standard curves adjustment. Just raise it extremely bright. I can look and see that will give a nice highlight. Hit OK. Yet I don't want the entire image highlighted so I'm going to need to fill it with black. I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, Black, hit OK. Suppose I just want to fill on him, then the best way to do that would be to create a clipping mask, which restricts it only to the underlying layer. Get my brush out with a white tip brush, and I'm using a round soft edge brush in this case, and I can paint. And what I'm doing is I'm painting visibility from that layer mask and showing through the change that I just made with that adjustment layer but only where I want it to be and that is dictated by the mask. By default all the adjustment layers will come with a layer mask already on them. So now I can see that I have a little bit of a highlight there. If you're ever trying to be thorough with your layer mask and you can't tell what you've painted and what you've not painted, a good shortcut is the left slash bracket tool it's right under backspace usually you hit that and you'll see where your mask has been painted and I can see the red is the part that is mask the transparent is the part that is showing from the mask and as I paint here I can actually paint and see where my mask is going to be I hope these techniques help you layer masking is much better in most cases than doing a destructive edit such as an erasing of your image and it helps you down the road in case you need to adjust it. It gives you a lot more flexibility. So if you need any tips on isolating, I encourage you to go check out the pin isolation tutorial that we have or some other things that you can use in that respect. But for masking, here's a few techniques that I trust you'll find useful.